about the kids. You didn't learn already. So my name is Tiffany Tichi, and I'm excited to share with you today. My talk is going to be about how a business mindset, because when I became an author, it became a business. And so thinking about that, how a business mindset transforms your career into children's books. Woo -hoo! Yes. Woo -hoo! <laughs> All right. So I'm going to have some interactions in between. I want you to you know, call and answer. What if I told you that your mindset holds the key to the success of an entrepreneur? So let's talk about it. We have these careers. We talk about promotions. What are, y'all answer me, what are common ways people typically pursue to secure a raise in their career? Talk to me. How, how do people try to get some raises? What do they Kiss do? Butt. Kiss butt. Say Kiss butt. Kiss butt. Kiss butt. Mm. Mm -hmm. Go to school. Training. Training. Sell their soul. Sell their soul. Roll the boss. Roll the boss. Roll the time. Oh, I feel y'all. Okay. <laughs> Well, what if I told you, <laughs> thank you for those answers, yes, I was expecting some of those. How many have thought about, so how many have thought about writing a children's book? Yes, you get those raises, you get those promotions, but have you thought about writing? Raise your hand if you thought about it. Some people was like, yeah, I think I've written down some and everything too. Okay, I see a few hands. Oh, oh see one pops up after you see it. Yeah, hang in there. Well, I want to at least introduce you. My name is Tiffany Tichi, and I'm always growing up saying, Tiffany with an eye, Tiffany with an eye. <laughs> so look at this. Look at this little girl. This was me. This was me. Oh, thanks. <laughs> this was me, one of those girls in class, math class, asking questions, mm -hmm. saying, I could do this. Because you got the boys in school and everything thinking they're smarter than you. And so I was that one in class asking the questions. And so this is that curious girl in math class. I was that curious girl asking questions. I didn't care because I know there was somebody else that did not know as well. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's the truth. <laughs> so just to give you a little bit of background, my mom was an educator. My dad was an entrepreneur. They believed in the power of education and working hard. And so my brother, he's also an engineer, so you'll find that out. But we both had to end up going to a math and science Saturday academy. That is where I learned, initially I wanted to be a lawyer. I thought I could, you know, debate and do all that. But by going to the Math and Science Saturday Academy, that encouraged me to say, okay, I can do problem solving. I can do all those type of things. And I can be that. Now, there were some obstacles when I decided to go into this, thinking engineering was it. But I did not realize what I did after taking classes. It's a male-dominated field. Yeah. Yes. Huh. Yes. <laughs> but I did not let that discourage me because remember that little girl back there? Yeah. It's still inside of me. And so there's other little girls that needed to see that. And so my dad being an entrepreneur, he had somebody who was a civil engineer. He said, hey, you might need to get your kid into, into engineering, civil engineering. That's called social capital. So when you think about it, you've got other people who can help you get to that piece of it. So I became an engineer. <laughs> yes. Mail down that field, but I did not care. I went in undecided. I didn't know what type of engineering, but mechanical engineering was the one I wanted because I needed to see things. I needed to see things move. So you know there's different types if you didn't know, but that's the one I chose. My brother decided civil engineering because he likes to build bridges and everything too. And me and him get into it because he's like, they're the first ever engineers to everything too because they built the pyramids. I was like, okay, I can do that. I can do that. <laughs> but, I saw lack of representation in this field yes. of science, technology, engineering, math. Mm -hmm. That acronym, it's also an A in there. If you haven't heard that, STEAM, that's arts. for arts. Mm -hmm. you are, some of y'all know. Yep. But I talk about STEM. And I have love for both of them. But I realized there was lack of representation. I would go and talk to the kids. And when I would talk to them, you know, becoming an engineer, a lot of them I said, how many been an engineer? And not many hands goes up. And that's when I realized I need to put this in writing and be able to tell my story I want to go back to that why, when I was that little girl asking questions. Because those kids don't know what it's like until they see some representation. So that is why I decided I wanted to put it into writing and write my first children's book. What can I be? STEM careers from A to Z. I started with an alphabet. I kept it simple. I did. I did. But it allowed them to be able to see the different careers in it as well. So just to give a little less, little bit where I am now <laughs> and what I've accomplished, um, international best an author, so I've been able to generate various other types of books from it, translated Spanish, French, Swahili, Italian, Ooh. teacher's guides, journals, all of that. 
but it's allowed me to be on various platforms. As I said, I've written a book, but it's allowed me to take my message and get it out to others because you go back to that little girl. There's other little girls that need to hear this story. And so that is why I do what I do. I've been able to get on various platforms from TEDx to Forbes to all those type of things. But it wouldn't be without me making sure that I'm getting that message out there. So that is why I am who I am. I've been able to travel South Africa, Ghana, all that. But the message is still the same. I want some representation in these books, and I want to be able to tell my story. So now, after you've heard all that, I want to make sure you realize that you can take that mindset. So we're going to give you some three topics. We're going to go into overcoming self-limiting beliefs when it comes to becoming a business owner um, and becoming successful when you transition to become, be able to generate children's books. Secondly, I want you to be able to cultivate an entrepreneur mindset. Uh, and crafting a career that's based off of your children's book. So I want to see more of those that has whatever career they have, but you can also do just like I did and tell your story through children's books. And then number three, how to develop entrepreneurial resiliency. Resiliency. Y'all heard me on the panel yesterday. That was my key word when it comes to leadership and everything. Having that resiliency is key when it comes to being able to craft children's books. So let's talk about number one, that self, overcoming self-limiting beliefs, especially when it comes to a business owner and wanting to create children's books. So when we talk about it, research shows that individually successfully conquer their self-limited beliefs when it comes to the innovation, the critical thinking, and invaluable traits that you have. You bring something to the table. You bring some value to you as far as becoming a business owner. We're going to go on to the next one. We're going to keep going. Um, so cultivating an entrepreneurial mindset. So this is topic number two when you're trying to create a children's book. When I talk about wanting to think about writing a book, I go back to my why. I do that a lot of times with my life with stars. Why did I decide to go into this? And so when you start thinking about wanting to get into this mindset, go back to your why. And that's where the reflection piece comes into it. Think about some influential figures. Who else is out there doing what you're doing that you want to do as far as similar things as far as children's books? Think about them or whoever's made a difference in your life. Be able to put that into a children's book. Draw inspiration. What makes you feel this is what's inspiring you? You get that why, but what's drawing inspiration is key as well. And then crafting that children's book. Now I'm gonna tell you, it's not, it's not just like you can just put something together. It's a team when it comes to creating a children's book. I stay in my lane. You think I can draw? No, I cannot draw. <laughs> so you have to get a book team. You have to work with a team. You have to get an illustrator. So there's other parts of it, but starts with that, what do you want? A vision. Write it down. Write the vision, make it plain. So write down what you want, thinking about the illustrations, because when it comes to a children's book, you got two different audiences. You got the parent who's going to buy it, and then you have the kids <laughs> who's going to be who they're reading it to. So it changes things when you think about a children's book. And then finally, molding future leaders. That is what a children's book does. You're molding them. By them reading those books, you're molding them, you're challenging them, you're allowing them to see the future of what they can be. So we're going to go into topic number three. How to develop the resiliency when it comes to entrepreneurship. Because it's needed <laughs> when it comes to it. So when we're talking about developing the re resiliency, it's not just about overcoming challenges. You know, they talk about the whole setbacks or comebacks for success. Like, those are big things when you talk about resiliency. And it's about using the challenges you have, because everybody has some struggle or challenge they go through. If you don't, I don't think, I don't think you're living. <laughs> I talk about that if you're not constantly learning, then you're kind of, you're dating, because you got to continue to grow. Um, and so you're going to deal with those challenges. But you make sure that you take those and seek opportunities, and that's the biggest piece with the growth and the impact that ties with it for resiliency. So now, let's talk about how I utilize my book and how I use the resiliency, how I use the transformation. I took it and said, okay, I'm an engineer, but I didn't want to put it all in just engineering. So it's a STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering book. Take that book, and how can you reuse it and repurpose it? So in there, they have like, they have robotic engineer. So now they can take your book, and now I can get them to do robots. Now you can take the parents and everything. They can now take the book and use it to the next level of how they can now take the reading, and let's use it to see it for itself. Put the hands on activities. Civil engineer. You see that civil engineer? 
That's kind of my mini body, my brother. <laughs> so I made sure he was represented in the book. Um, they call him Bob the Builder. That's what he's going to call him here. I was like, okay, Bob. <laughs> but um, if you look at it, the civil engineer is constructions and buildings and everything. So bridges. And so I take this now and I utilize it. So now let's go get the kids to go build bridges. And you can use similar materials and stuff like that. And so that's what I do when I take the book. I use it, but I take it to a whole nother level. How can we take it and make it where they can continue to grow from it? And that's really what I've done with the book. Now I've taken it where I have another whole series, the Steel Crew Kids Adventures, building a balloon power car, uh, building a magical spaceship. So now they're building, they're working as a team. The Steel Crew Kids is working as a team, team building. So they're learning different skills in these books. And that's something to think about when you're writing books as well for children. Cultural side of things, cultural and social relevance. How can your book take it to the next level? Be global. Like, who would have thought? I mean, translated in Spanish, French, Swahili. And last year I went to Italy. I said, oh, I'm going to Italy. I need, I need a book in Italian. <laughs> All right, I'm going to make it in Italian. So I just know the resources and was able to get it in Italian. And, and so the sky's the limit on what you can do with your book, but the global aspect. So not only just from English, now I have it in various formats. So it's just taking that book, but taking it to the next level of how you can reach more message out there as far as getting it out there. So I'm just giving you ideas of, yes, you get this children's book, what else can you do with it? What else can you do with it? I've been able to go travel to Ghana, talk to the kids, um, to South Africa with the TEDx. Um, I have my radio show, Read It Right radio show, where I'm able to basically take my message and get it out there for others to be able to see. So it's allowing me to get the media platforms and be on different platforms. So those are things when you think about the whole transformation of your career and putting it into writing for kids, take it to a whole other level. And that's what I've been able to say, you can do it too. <laughs> and so this just shows the different platforms you can be a part of if you take it to the next level of leveraging the book itself. So let me ask you a question. How many have found what I've been talking about today Va of value? Yes. 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 <laughs> the Wild of Children's Books is incredible and it's powerful. I mean, the thing is, what makes my day is when I'm going to talk to the kids and I go to the vending events and they see me on the back of it. They see me on the back of it. Like, I'm an author. And they can become an author too. And it's like encouraging and they're like, oh, you, thank you for being in the book. And so it's just many things where I know that I'm making an impact. And that goes back to my why, y'all. And I think people realize my passion is because I know what it was like when I was growing up, and I want that child to be able to experience it too. And so when I'm speaking about how you can do it too, you really can. Um, and I'm a great example of it as well. So what is it costing you, you know, by not becoming an entrepreneur um, with children's books? Well. All right, get your phones out, scan, or type it on your phone. But I want to make sure you know, I want to make sure you do it the right way. <laughs> and that's important. You want to make sure I'm doing it the right way. So go to www.publishtherightbook.com. Simple, QR code. And I'm going to show you how there's five mistakes. I don't want you to make these mistakes that people make when they're trying to publish a children's book. Because like I said, you've got a different audience. You've got to be able to market it. you got to make sure that you... Just don't throw anything together, because people really can tell <laughs> if you throw it together. And so check it out. I've, I've basically given you some tips, and then you can follow up. We can do a discovery session, discovery call, and we can see how we can take many of y'all who rose your hand and said you want to be a children's book author, I can get you to the next level with it. So make sure you download and use the QR code, www.publishtherightbook.com. Now let's talk about Oprah. Oprah. <laughs> Got to give you a quote from Oprah. The true decision is how will you use yourself and everything that you have been given to serve that yeah. that is greater than yourself. That is when real empowerment will happen. You gotta think outside of the box and think it's not about you when you're writing these books, when you're talking about doing these children's books. It's more than that. What impact are you gonna make? And that's the key part that you have to think about when it comes to writing children's books. So I had to get my Oprah in here so you can see that quote because, you know, it's important to make sure that you are thinking about it. So I'm going to go back to this. Grab your free ebook, 
www.publishtherightbook.com. I want to see more children's books out there because they need to hear your story. And I think that's what's important when it comes to it. So if you want to get in touch with me, www.publishtherightbook.com. I'm Tiffany Tichi. And I think, what am I going to do? If you download it, show me you've got a receipt. I'm going to do that. I got, I got an extra book. You know I don't want that panel. I got this too, this part. Show me you did it. Show me you did it. And then I'll give you, give you a copy. I'll give you a copy. So, oh, y'all ain't waste no time. Okay. <laughs> Once again, if you want, oh, you showing it too? Okay. Okay. Y'all see me after this, okay? I see you. Okay. All right. www.publishtherightbook.com. I love it. Y'all have been great. Thank you so much.